We're the robust adaptive systems lab here as part of the Robotics Institute. So we're interested in looking at the questions of robustness for systems and adapting systems as they execute online in order to take care of real world constraints. My work as a PhD student has been looking at online planning and controls for multi-robot systems. I think that there are going to be a lot of applications where people want to use multiple robots at a single time, for example, for inspection purposes or for disaster recovery. If you use more than one robot, you can cover ground faster, get more information back. But these are complicated situations where you can't pre-plan. The demo that I'm going to be giving you guys is a group of 15 robots that are ordered to take off, form into a single group, split into different groups, move around the arena, execute different commands, um, come back together, so some formation flying by these different robots. So all of this is planning in real time and redirecting the robots from their previous behaviors to these new behaviors in a feasible and safe manner. If the centralized planner can't find a collision-free route that obeys all these instructions, we simply don't execute it at this time. So that means that the plans will never collide. How do we handle really windy conditions or cases where you don't really know, you know exactly where the robot is? You have a lot of uncertainty to account for. What I'm looking at is how do we actually learn new control strategies, new control policies as we go, but do so in a very rigorous manner so that we don't just crash the vehicle as we're trying to learn. So we'll basically see the vehicle take off and we'll command it to fly uh, three different you know, elliptical trajectories uh, through our flight arena. And as it flies through there, it's going to encounter just a very turbulent, uh, kind of spatially varying wind field generated by eight high power fans we have in there. It'll be kind of wobbly, might not track as well, but as it flies through, it'll learn more of these controllers, and so you'll actually see control performance improve over time. And so ideally, by the second and third laps, we actually see much more steady, much more uh, safe and stable flight performance. There's a lot of interest in be just being able to fly outdoors in you know, windy environments and things like that. And so these techniques will basically let you learn how to compensate for that without you know, the programmer having to go in and hard code all of these type of solutions beforehand.